Hi everyone, it's Kevin coming to you from the state of Maryland. Uh, today's video is going to be about scrimmage kicks, uh, specifically punts for uh, players and coaches. Alright, so if you're a player or coach, you're going to want to stick around and watch this video because I'm going to clarify a few things. When we see these types of plays, punts and things like that, sometimes we, we see some confusion on the field. Uh, players don't exactly know what they're allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do. And we also hear uh, a lot of questions from the coaches and comments because they can, can get kind of confused too. For officials, we're going to refresh you on a couple things and talk about a few things. Uh, rule 6 is one of our shorter rules in the rule book that covers kicking, but it's the most densely populated. And uh, when we have some big uh, screw-ups uh, as officials with misinterpretation of the rules and things like that, it a lot of times is uh, involved in the kicking game uh, because the lower levels don't kick as much. We don't kick during the preseason. We're thrown into the season and we start doing scrimmage kicks and uh, things can get a little bit confusing. So we're going to clear that up. I'm not going to talk about scrimmage kick formation today. Uh, that's going to be for another video because that's pretty in-depth. And I'm not going to talk about penalty enforcement because that's also uh, extremely in-depth. So to keep this video shorter, we're just going to talk about the nuts and bolts, uh, things that happen during the down. So uh, please uh, watch, subscribe, and leave any comments or questions in the uh, comment section below. Thank you. Uh, first thing we want to talk about when we look at these punts, uh, they expand a neutral zone. So the expanded neutral zone goes two yards be uh, beyond uh, the defense or ours line of scrimmage, which is right about here. So we're going to say uh, to right about here, uh, everything that happens... Behind here, all touching of the ball is going to be ignored. So if uh, this scrimmage kick is low and one of these players from R and one of the black players put up their hand and the ball is touched in this area right in here, we're going to ignore that touching. And the same thing with uh, if a player in white were to touch this from the kicking team. That touching is going to be ignored. Any touching inside this area is ignored. Now once we go past the expanded neutral zone, that's going to be a different uh, different scenario. So we're going to take a look here. Uh, line drive punt, it's coming down. Now, when we see a ball bouncing around like we do here, uh, what do you hear the coaches always start to scream? Get away from it. Don't touch it. You know, get away from it. Uh, I want to make something clear to everyone. <clears throat> you cannot be t pushed into a ball. A player cannot be pushed into the ball and uh, it count as a touch. So... Uh, we're just going to say, ball's bouncing around. My guy right here, he has no interest in uh, picking up this ball. He's kind of moving away for it. If one of these uh, players in white were to come and throw him on the ball or contact him uh, or make him uh, touch this ball, push him into the ball, that would be touching ignored. So that's something that we need to clear up. That's a, that's a uh, higher level uh, rule. In, this, in high school football, uh, if you are pushed into the ball by an opponent, the touching is ignored. So white cannot push this black player onto the ball and uh, think that it's a muff or a touch. And it goes the other way. Uh, you see the ball uh, is still moving there. Uh, if this uh, player in black were to come up here and uh, push one of the white players into the ball, we're not going to call it... Uh, count that as the first touching of the kick so uh, none of that is going to count you can't push somebody in the ball and make it count as a, as a touch now we're talking about the ball it's bouncing around here as soon as white touches this ball and we're going to just say uh, uh, just for the purposes of, of learning here let's just say one of the players in white touches the ball here that's going to be the first touching of the kick the ball continues to come down here, and you see where the kick ends, uh, right in this section. The receivers have the right to place the ball here at the 50-yard line because of first touching of the kick. So uh, those are all things that uh, uh, we want to be clear of. So we should always be putting down a beanbag officials uh, of where the, uh, the ball was first touched by K. Now, here's another thing I want to clear up for coaches and players. Uh, coaches seem to think that once the kickers touch the ball, and once again, we're going to just, uh, for, for the purposes of learning, 
We're going to say the ball was touched back here. Okay. Uh, so we have first touching of the kick back here. Coaches seem to think that now nothing bad can happen if uh, this our player were to pick up this ball and run with it. So for the scenario, we have the touch here by K. R wants to pick this ball up, uh, which he does. And let's say he runs 20 yards or whatever and is fumbles the ball recovered by K. So in this situation, just to be clear, first touching here, okay. R picks up the ball, runs with it, is hit, fumbled, recovered by the white team. White team's all excited they have the ball. It is true. In this situation, R may uh, take the ball at the spot of first touching. Even though at the end of the down, White was in possession of the ball, there was a violation of first touching here. So the team in black is going to say, hey, we want the ball. We'll take it at the spot of first touching. So uh, that is something that we want to want to clarify for everyone. All right, next scenario. We have first touching just for learning purposes. We have first touching the kick by Team White, uh, Team K. That's in white here. Ball continues down the field. Gentleman here in black. He says, "I want to pick this ball up and run with it." He picks the ball up with, runs with the ball, and then is hit and is fumbled. Uh, let's just say he fumbles in this area. It's recovered by White. In this situation. Uh, Yes, like we just said, R could take the the uh, the ball at the spot of first touching unless R committed a foul. So one thing we want to be clear on: if there is an accepted penalty during this down, the right for the receivers to take the ball at the spot of first touching is eliminated. So in this case, uh, during the kick, if we were to have uh, a hold, uh, put a hold here for, I'm sorry, that's a terrible age. We have a hold up in this area, uh, first touching, a hold, and then a run by uh, by the receiver, fumbled, recovered by White. We're getting kind of crazy. Because there was a file, uh, R cannot take the, the ball at the spot first touching. In this case, we would have to go back previous spot and force the file from there and K could uh, gain a first down. So I just want to make that clear. Very unlikely to happen. We don't see it a lot, but I want to make it uh, clear while we're on this topic. We also want to make sure that all officials understand that there can be multiple spots of first touching. So once again, we're saying just for the purposes of learning, we have first touching here, first touching here, first touching here, and then the kick ends down here. We should have a bean bag or uh, bean bags down uh, every spot of first touching, and Team R uh, can elect where they want to, the ball to be placed after first touching. And uh, most likely, you know, they're going to take the most advantage uh, spot, which would be up here around the 50. So just to be clear on multiple spots of first touching. Another rule that seems to be misinterpreted by players, coaches, and officials is uh, right here. We're going to watch this ball. It Once again, I, I don't want to split hairs, hairs right now, but the ball has come to complete and total rest. When the ball has come to complete and total rest and it is touched by the kicking team, this is beyond the neutral zone here, and it's touched by the kicking team, the ball is dead now. This is not first touching of the kick. It's not. Uh, it's it's not first touching. But I want to make clear right now. As soon as the ball is touched, it's dead. Okay, that's in rule four. That's not going to be in rule six. You got to look deep into rule four to find that one. And the reason I want to bring this up is because uh, coaches and players seem to think, oh, the ball has come to a complete rest. It's touched by K. Uh, some coaches and players think, oh, we can still pick this ball up. Some officials don't kill this ball completely. All right. So you need to kill this ball. If it's come to a complete rest and it's touched by K, kill it and award the ball to R. And it's not first touching. At the higher levels, uh, I do believe that 
Uh, if K touches a ball that's come to complete rest, R can come still come by and, and, and pick that ball up and run with it, but not at high school level. Okay, so now we're going to talk about uh, who can advance a kick. Now, some you may have heard the expression or the saying, uh, K can never advance a kick. Well, that is not 100% uh, true. Uh, it is true on a free kick or a kickoff, uh, the kicking team can never advance a kick. Scrimmage kicks, that applies to kicks beyond the neutral zone. However, if the ball is behind the neutral zone, any player on the field can pick that up and run with it. And uh, we're going to show here, you can see uh, we have scrimmage kick formation. The team in red, they're going to punt. Uh, the line of scrimmage is uh, about the 25-yard line, so just pay attention to that. We'll watch the kick. This kick actually goes beyond the line of scrimmage, which is uh, which is okay. And then it comes back. And you'll see it here. You can see the ball bouncing around in here. Now, what everyone needs to understand right now, anyone can advance this ball. It's bounced back behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, the team in red, the team, the kicking team can kick this ball, pick this ball up and run with it. If they pick it up and run with it, they must meet the line of game to be awarded a new series of downs. And you can see this kid, nobody really understands what's going on there, and they're just all kind of standing around. So, coaches, you need to make it clear to the players. In a situation like this, and we've seen this several times at high school where the punt goes straight up and then comes straight back down or the punt's blocked, uh, anyone can advance this kick. All right, another punt play. We want to talk about muffs very quickly. We have a large crowd gathering down here around where the ball is about to come down at. That probably right in here is uh, kick catching interference by this guy because he does he almost obstructs, I believe he obstructs the path to the ball uh, of the receiver. But let's just pretend that didn't happen. And let's just talk about a couple things. Now you see this ball come down and it bounces where there's bodies everywhere. Uh, officials, when you have this, uh, one sideline is going to be shouting that's been touched by somebody. But what we want to do here is we don't ever guess. This isn't a safety issue. We only count this as a muff or a touch by R if we're 100% sure that we saw it. And uh, I can guarantee there I wasn't at this game, but I would bet that uh, there were multiple people saying he touched, he touched it. Uh, you can see on video he didn't touch it, uh, but so that's why we don't guess. Don't. It's not a touch unless you're 100% sure. Don't guess. Let's talk about this though. If this ball were to come down and be touched uh, right in here by number 80 in white, and the ball bounces off his knee, the easiest thing to understand is if this ball is muffed or touched by uh, that's 81 in white by 81 in white. The next team to possess the ball is uh, it's going to be their ball, and there's going to be new set downs. So we're going to say, uh, just for the sake of learning here, we have a muff by number 81 in white. He's the first one to touch this ball. It's touched and then recovered here by black. It's going to be their ball, okay? It would be black's ball on about the 45-yard uh, line. So... This is still a kick. It was muffed, but it's still a kick. So if there was a muff, Black can pick up this ball. They would have possession of it, and it would be their ball at the 45-yard line. They cannot advance this kick. This kick is beyond the neutral zone, uh, and they, even though it was touched by a receiver, they cannot advance the kick, so it's their ball there. You just got to remember it when we have muffs a lot of time. Uh, these guys are off to the races down here, so you got to remember to kill that immediately, officials, and place the ball there. Uh, if you had the muff by number 81 here, and it comes down, and White recovers this ball, we'll just, uh, they can advance it if they like. If they don't, the ball is going to be dead, and we'll be going this direction first and 10. Final thing we're going to talk about is kicks going into our end zone and the force, and we want to make everything clear. Uh, we have Team in Black here, they're punting. If you watch this punt, it's actually a really good punt. And you see the ball going in the end zone. Obviously, that's a touchback. But what I want to do is I want to clear up a little bit of confusion here. 
uh, because what we have seen in the past, it doesn't just happen in the state of Maryland, it happens all over. Uh, we have seen muffs by R, let's pretend, just again for the, state, the sake of learning, we have a muff uh, by Team R here. And the ball goes into the end zone. So it's touched by R and continues to run in the roll into the end zone. That will always be a touchback. All kicks going into R's end zone are going to be a touchback because the original force will always be the kick. It doesn't matter who touches it or what happens. It's going to be a touchback. So I want to make very clear to everyone, if R muffs this ball, this guy in white muffs the ball, and it continues to roll into the end zone, the second it goes over the plane of the goal line or touches the plane of the goal line, uh, it is a touchback. Now, let's talk about batting. Team R, I'm sorry, Team K, the team in black, they can, they are legally allowed to bat this ball uh, back towards their own goal line. So they can come down here, and we see it a lot. You know, they're trying to keep it out of the end zone. They can bat the ball back this way. That is perfectly legal. Uh, but if it continues to go in the end zone, it will be a touchback. Even if... Team R were to come down here. Let's just say the ball is bouncing around here, and uh, this guy bats the ball into the end zone. It's still a touchback. It, you cannot apply a new force to a grounded ball on a kick. Uh, it's always going to be a touchback. Now, that is completely different after the kick is ended. That's different on uh, normal scrimmage downs. But uh, when the ball goes in the end zone after a kick, it's always going to be a touchback. The original force is, of the kick is what placed the ball into the end zone. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching. Uh, I want to make it clear that I did not cover everything that it, that's involved in a scrimmage kick. Okay, we just covered the nuts and bolts, the stuff that I thought was most important and needed to be clarified. But uh, when it comes to some of these rules, uh, a 30-minute video is just not enough time. It, it, a day is not enough time. It takes a lot of commitment to understand this rule in its entirety. And so uh, I challenge officials, dig into the rule book, dig into the case book, dig into all your other support books that come along with those, and learn the rule. Uh, for coaches, uh, I recommend that you reach out to your official officiating associations in the pre, uh, preseason that way you can, they can clarify anything that uh, you need to be clarified and get you ready for the regular season. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, and I look forward to publishing more videos soon. Uh, they should be out every Friday. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.